Hello YouTube, my name is Halkery. I am the current any percent all lords catch em all beat cleavor world record holder for this game Pokemon Legends Arceus. And I'd like to welcome you to my all lords speedrun tutorial. Now if you've if you're seeing this run, seeing this page, you might have already seen my AGDQ 2023 speedrun of this. But if you're not familiar with this category, uh, this is basically any percent minus the first 11, 12 minutes or so, the intro and minus the last hour, which we'll call the end game. Uh, it's a much shorter version of any percent that just gets to the meat of the run. And uh, it is preferred by people that, you know, just can't uh, may not have time or may have issues doing longer speedruns. If you find any value from the series or just want to you know, support me, consider subscribing below. I'm very close to a thousand subscribers and hitting a thousand subscribers would enable me to produce a lot more content for this channel, for this game, for the Pokemon series in general. So if you like this series, be sure to subscribe. All right, let's get into it. This is the first section of the speedrun. This is the starter select. I have gone ahead and played through the game up to this decision. I've saved and quit so I can do the cinematic start by pressing A on the title screen. I prefer that. Yeah, we're going to pick Cyndaquil here. Um, Cyndaquil is actually the, uh, long-term worst Pokemon. However, the starter is not used in the speedrun long-term, so it's perfectly valid to use Cyndaquil here. It's going to be very, very helpful to us early on. Uh, namely, Cyndaquil is the only Pokemon that gets research tasks done from the move it starts with, Quick Attack. Uh, Rowlet and Oshawott don't get research until they get Leafage or, or Aqua Jet. So Cyndaquil can already start building up on its research tasks. All right, we're just going to run out the door. And once you've heard this door closing sound, um, you can already start to adjust your camera by holding uh, left on the, the right stick or right, whichever your inversion is set. You want to turn the camera towards um, the gates to the left of the town uh, that you're supposed to be going out of right now. It makes it easier to line things up and take the straightest line possible. Uh, but just know once you've heard the door sound closing sound, you can start doing this. Even though the screen is black, it is accepting your inputs. Like that. And I've got a timer on the side of the screen in the top right corner so you can see roughly how long this segment is taking me. And um, you do want to go ahead and deposit your Pokeballs. It may not make sense right now, but I promise I will explain what uh, purpose of that is. Then you'll want to do a crouch cancel into this cutscene. I uh, do have an entire video explained or dedicated to explaining crouch cancels and what they do. But to sum it up shortly, um, when you're approaching cutscene triggers like this, uh, the game will not advance until your character is completely neutral and still. So when you run directly into a cutscene without stopping, you do this weird buckling, like coming to a complete halt out of your dash animation. And it's very, very, very slow to get to neutral that way. Now, what is faster is this crouching and all the game has to do is stand you up. Uh, if you do that perfectly, it saves about one second every time you do it. Even if you do it kind of slow, you'll still save a quarter of a second or something. So it's definitely worth going for every single time if you can get your own visual cues down or get a feel for most of the cutscene triggers. The time adds up. Okay, so this is Volo's Togepi fight. There's not much nuance to this. Uh, I will explain the nuance as it you know comes up. Now, this is your battle layout. Uh, plus, we'll show you, I believe, the stat changes of any of the combatants, which is not really that helpful. Um, fight, runaway, Pokemon items, and then Y here will show you the turn order of the combatants. You want to open this up as soon as possible. Um, if you don't think you can fit a Y input while you're mashing A to fight, uh, I would just go ahead and press Y and then start mashing A. Just so you have that on screen. It's very, very, very helpful information. And it'll help you in this fight. Very, or you know, believe it or not. So I've gone ahead and opened it up, and I've gone ahead and used Quake Attack. It's the only move we have. And then Togepi's going to get a turn. And then here, 
once you go to select your second quick attack, there is a chance that Cyndaquil will be f the first two slots in the move order. It'll be Cyndaquil, Cyndaquil instead of Cyndaquil Togepi like you see on my screen. That means you have a very, very, very exceptionally fast Cyndaquil. Um, because every time you're using quick attack, you're decreasing, uh, you're increasing Togepi's action speed. You're basically slowing down Togepi. And you can only pass Togepi twice um, if you have a pretty fast Cyndaquil. Unfortunately, I don't. But um, if you do end up getting the fast Cyndaquil, what that means is that you're going to do this move and you're going to get to go again. And Togepi's not going to get a second turn, which saves four seconds. But uh, it's a small time loss. And, you know, it's not really anything you can do about it. So it's not worth resetting over. And get to move Ember. I will not be using Ember for a while, actually. Not in this video. Okay, so there's just some cutscenes here. And then you just need to do another crouch cancel up to the security core uh, guard. Let's crouch and then press A to talk to him. You will need to select Jubilife or, or Field Lands Camp. Now we're going to come out here and there's another cutscene here. Smash through it. And here we'll be going for another crouch cancel. This is about where I input the B to crouch. Um, you can play around with it. You can kind of use any of this that you you know see something that could be used as a visual cue. But this is where I pretty much pause and uh, and crouch to enter this cutscene. All right. So um, city and field lands. We got to catch the B doof, the Starly, and the Shinx. Now, you may be wondering how we're going to do that when we have no Pokeballs. Um, as of this moment, we are unable to backtrack and go to the deposit box. So essentially, we are softlocked. We don't have any Pokeballs. And we don't have any way to get Pokeballs. However, this game has a softlock pre uh, prevention mechanism in place. For if you have no Pokeballs, the game just assumes you've thrown them all and you're actually tragic at catching Pokemon. You caught you had 20 Pokeballs. And you couldn't catch one Beedoof with it. So if you come over here and talk to Akari or Ray, whoever your rival happens to be, they will give you 20 Pokeballs for free. And we still have those other Pokeballs. They're just in our deposit box. So essentially, we've just scanned the game out of uh, 20 Pokeballs, which is massive in the early game when money is extremely tight. Now, I've thrown the ball at the Bidoof and then run over here to this Apricorn, picked it up, and now I'm standing still. You might as well pick up this Apricorn since it's just sitting there and you're just waiting for the Bidoof to get in the ball anyway. Uh, the important thing is to make sure that you are completely still whenever the Bidoof eventually gets caught. Don't be crouching, don't be dancing or anything, because you will lose time. Because like I said, most cutscenes in this game will wait for your character to be absolutely neutral uh, before the game will proceed. And that applies here as well. And then we're going to do another crouch cancel here. This is about where I decide to crouch. Uh, I guess you can use this, I guess, the distance between these two white specks on the ground, like this area where my cursor is filling right now. Um, but yeah, once again, you can find your own visual cue thing you look at. Um, but this is basically where you want to crouch for an optimal crouch cancel. And then for the Starly... I'm going to recommend that you crouch in the grass immediately and then catch the Starly without being spotted. Uh, catching Starly without being spotted means catching it while there are no dots above its head in a thought bubble. I forgot to do this while I was recording this footage. Um, so yeah, wait till the dots are gone. They're gone. Throw the ball and then try to come over here, switch to Cyndaquil and throw the berry or throw the Cyndaquil at this berry tree. I barely missed it by like a few frames in this run. Uh, however, if you don't want to go for that and waste the berries like I just did, I don't have any berries and they're gone now. Uh, you can wait until after you've uh, caught the Starly and after that cutscene with the rival. And then before you get to this next rival cutscene, you can throw your Cyndaquil now and get them uh, if you want to be safe. And I don't think that's that much time loss. Another crouch cancel and I line up pretty much. I crouch walk into Akari's shadow here. That's my visual cue. Like that.
Okay, so for Shinx, uh, our last trial here. Um, you are absolutely forced to engage this in battle. Even if Starly and Bidoof drop a spoiled apricorn each, you cannot stun or get out of having to battle this Shinx uh, regularly. Now, the thing with Shinx, and it's just greater commentary on the um, battle or the catch formula in general, uh, you have a higher catch rate when uh, you initiate a battle with a backstrike. That's basically just a leftover from catching things in the overworld with a backstrike, except it applies to battles too. So you can just throw Cyndaquil down at the ground, like, you know, near Shinx or whatever. Um, but if you want to increase your catch rate by about 5%, you can run behind Shinx and strike it in the back with your Cyndaquil. Um, but this Shinx was very, very, very far away, so I chose not to. And the 5% is not really that great. It goes from 72 to 77, so it's not the biggest jump um, in odds for you so whatever you want to do all right we're just going to immediately press x to switch from pokeballs or switch from pokemon to right now we have uh, our pokemon on our hot bar but um simply by pressing x you'll switch to pokeballs and then by pressing zr you'll throw the pokeball i've already gone in the menu and turned off the r confirmation and you should too um, because once you press ZR, there's normally like a text box that pops up that asks you if you want to actually throw a Pokeball and it just wastes time. And, uh, you should be in the menu anyway, changing your sensitivity since the b default sensitivity, it doesn't, uh, it it's better for you to get used to a higher sensitivity. I personally play on five, which is the maximum. It allows you to, you know, swivel your view a lot more and catch things faster and feed things in a circle faster as we'll go through in this run all right cynical is caught uh once again if you find any value from this um uh, from this tutorial series uh please consider subscribing i'm almost at a thousand subscribers and once i get there um it'll become a lot easier for me to make this kind of content for legends rcs or any other game that i speed run um i do want to make a catch them all tutorial in video format as well so you know leave a like let me know what you thought if you have any questions about this segment of the run be sure to leave a comment. I will try to respond to all questions in the comments about this run. Be sure to check the resources in the description. I will see you for the next part. Obsidian Fieldlands.